Welcome back friends, carrying forward with the discussion on product life cycle and the associated aspects. Let me draw your attention towards Theodore Leavitt's paper called exploit the product life cycle. You know the reference is give, given here and I have given the link also. This uh, you know has been a pivotal kind of a paper written by Leavitt in 1965 and it is a very structured description of how a product may traverse, what a product manager might do. You see he has actually focused upon elements of decision making associated with the understanding of product life cycle. So I would definitely recommend you to read this paper and think in terms of you know what uh, we are going through as far as the discussion goes and definitely there is a wonderful chapter written by Professor Philip Kotler in his uh, book marketing management on this. So, but you see PLC is related to foreseeing while acknowledging. And I am saying uh, this with, with the reference to the discussion we have had in the last session. If you, uh, you know, want to revisit that video, please do that. And then once you watch that video, you know, just reiterate those things in your mind uh, when we discussed about, you know, different scenarios. Now, you see, a product manager looking at his product, the intensity of the name associated with that and uh, I am I am uh, mentioning that, but I will come to this point later on uh, when we will talk about brand. But a product manager thinking about his product, for example, he is a product manager of a car, of a tea and then that tea can be a highly renowned named tea, that can be uh, you know uh, a highly renowned coffee uh, uh, brand basically or a locally sold tea for example, but but I will not go into the discussion of that you know what is his target segment and how many people know about him and what is the intensity of their awareness about the brand. No, let us not go into that right now, but just focus upon the product and he wants to foresee where you know it is placed that is you know uh, you know uh, where it would go and he wants to acknowledge that where it stands in terms of sales volume number of customers for that matter if you want to convert it that way and then he wants to foresee that where the product would be taken, how he should drive the product I should say, the decision making perspective. So, you see when you say foreseeing future because we have to prepare for the growth of the product or let us say stability of the product if it is stagnating somewhere in terms of the number of customers or sales volume somewhere. For example, glass related products, glass bottles and several other things that product got converted into plastic based products. So, if a product manager is actually driving glass based products especially in terms of water bottles or, or let us say glass is a packaging material in terms of you know packaging se several kinds of liquids and if he, if he is uh, into industrial sales or B2B marketing or B2C marketing, you know, directly selling to consumers, he is wondering on where would he be taking this kind of a product at this stage. So, you see, uh, almost two, two and a half or three decades back, a product manager thinking in terms of glass based products would have imagined that this is going downwards, and I should be thinking in terms of converting it into a plastic based packaging product or plastic based water bottles. So, that is what product managers dilemma is about you know where to take it, how to take it kind of and he, then he takes a call. Then for example, steel based products, earthenware vanished, but still is there. Some products, some product managers are doing wonders on that. I will be talking about it, how it goes, you know, why it happens and how it happens because there is a stage we can uh, bring on as far as rejuvenating the things basically despite of the decline. Then toys, you know, several kinds of toys. So, material has changed, perspective has changed, the, the story narrative around the toys, uh, you know, is changing, 
several kinds of characters they are they are uh, coming up in due course of time and there was a course called masters of computer application for example a fundamental course which is no more there now it was a very high selling program two years degree program i am not saying computer application skills they are no more there you see uh, they have traversed into several kinds of courses and very important courses have been launched instead of masters of computer application but mca as a product is no more there so forcing future so as to prepare acknowledging where we are and thinking in terms of what to do if i find that mca is declining as a program what should i do should i be putting off the the institute as well no i should be thinking in terms of converting that syllabus with present or contemporary relevance and you know taking it towards being a different kind of a program probably targeting at the same kind of a customer or bringing on board the newer kind of customers and i reiterate the fact that i do not wish to call students as customers but when we are talking of mc as a program then this is a compulsion so just take it that way although i have always taken students as products rather than customers now you see so uh, when we when we say what to do answer is product strategy and management that is what product managers do they strategize and they manage but the subsequent question is how and that we will try to understand in due course of time through and through but before that let's come back to the main subject which we have been discussing in pursuing and trying to understand product life cycle you see plc model is useful as a framework for developing effective marketing strategies in different stages of the life cycle of both physical goods and services so that is the point precisely which we discussed just you know a while ago effective marketing strategies development of effective marketing strategies now product life cycle can be illustrated as a curve in a diagram in which the horizontal axis represents time while the vertical axis portrays sales slash profits and that can be seen in terms of number of customers as well although number of customers we do not use often because number of customers does not always justify uh, itself in terms of profits basically then there are typical stages associated with the products life cycle and then or, or we we have divided it that way so those stages are introduction growth maturity and decline and we'll be talking about those stages uh, you know subsequently so but in the meanwhile look at this this was a beautiful product you know i bought 1000 songs in your pocket and then this was a later version of ipod i i remember the best version which i liked was you know the smallest one stamp size kind of an equipment which you know which, which you are just holding in your fist like this and and i have mentioned that uh, earlier somewhere in my uh, you know discussions uh, if i remember correctly probably in some other course uh, i think integrated marketing communication if i'm not wrong so so and i just put it in the uh, pocket and and then you keep on changing the songs and listening to those and so on and uh, beautiful product wonderful product i still have one now you see global I, apple ipod sales from 2006 to 2014 in million units you just look at the bars here and and uh, it was launched in 2001 if i if i'm not wrong you can check it on uh, the sources uh, we could only fetch the data from 2000, 2006 so if you will look at you know uh, the the graph from 2001 onwards there will be uh, almost a plc graph available for you Uh, as far as this particular product goes apple exited that product in due course of time uh, uh, you know because they wanted uh, you know downloadable music on probably on the mobile phones and then that was much a feasible thing for them to you know infuse the capability of an ipod in their mobile phones so so probably that was the reason but but if you will look at this the trajectory of this uh, product 
2001 to 2014, 14 years it, it went quite well suitably you know and, and then slowly getting exited and so on. So, so the graph justifies and this can this you can find in terms of data about all the other products and, and this would you know, uh, you know give you an insight on how and what or especially what happened in terms of the products basically. Now, let us go to the stages one by one. First is introduction stage, you see and, and uh, as the text says, as the book says, you know introduction stage or any stage for that matter uh, can be seen with the perspective of categories, you know. For example, how to look at introduction stage with reference to sales. So, sales growth tends to be slow because it takes time to roll out a new product and gain consumer acceptance. But it is not a universal kind of a thing, you see here it is, it is a broader outlook given by authors which is uh, you know uh, commonly found. So, I would not say because you would find many products which immediately pick up and there is much a less difference in terms of their introduction and growth stages. So, so they might you know immediately uh, take a sharp rise in terms of sales and I am talking of Apple, Apple iPhones. Uh, you know the different kinds of models so you will find that immediate pickup in terms of sales and so on. So, profits you know in most of the cases many a times are negative because the product has yet to pick up, profits are low because costs are very high you know and, and uh, you know uh, there, there is cost of marketing which is the highest at this particular stage because you are putting up lot many uh, you know um, campaigns, you are you are organizing events. And, and you are going through uh, so much in due course of time and, and, uh, and for this description just watch my videos on integrated marketing communication course and you would realize you know uh, how cost works and uh, how, how things are. So, then price you see. So, prices tend to be higher because costs are high and firms focus on buyers who are the readiest to buy and then again it is always not the universal thing basically prices might be low and uh, you know you, you have introductory prices many a times. So, so you just do not put up high prices always all the time. This is a different kind of a strategic perspective pursued by different kinds of organizations looking at the competitive scenario. For example, competition is high so you cannot just put up the pr high price basically, but if you are sure of your brand value as I said Apple or Samsung, so, so they definitely put up a uh, you know a different kind of a price bracket for many of their products. And it is not common in every product actually. So, so, there are different kinds of products in lines and we have talked about lines and those kind of uh, discussions earlier as well. Then promotion. So, promotional expenditures are at their highest ratio to sales because of the need to inform potential consumers. We have just mentioned you know talked about this induced product trial, secure distribution, retail outlets and so on and there are several examples. Here I would urge you, request you to start listing down different kinds of examples you can think of, start working upon those because that will enable you uh, further in developing your understanding about what we are talking of. So, so you know I, I can give you uh, count countable number of uh, examples, but you can go for you know innumerable examples. So, you see for example, self driven cars, self driving cars, Apple is also launching one, Google is working on that if I am not wrong, Tesla is, is working on that and several uh, larger organizations you know they are they are focusing upon that kind of thing basically and it's whole lot of a technological backup is there. So, they are they are still you know and, and uh, some some are testing uh, those products on road basically. So, we would not say that those are in introductory stage they are on in, in pre introductory stage. So, so we can always put up a stage before introduction stage as well and uh, that uh, graph which I showed you uh, that mentions product development stage also. So, until and unless it becomes commercially viable it is actually projected on uh, you know with, with reference to the usage of uh, the customer it is un somewhere between development and introductory stage. And uh, uh, last discussion I remember I mentioned about ICO uh, the Sony's robot. 
So, so that is also you know that kind of an example. Now you see AI powered drones now that is actually you know yes that to me uh, it is it is moving from introduction towards growth now. So, that is that is actually you know uh, somewhat working well. For example, 3D printing has grown and now it is traversing into 4D printing actually and it is very interesting just go to some website uh, you know and you would find that they have uh, printed a complete bridge in Netherlands. Now, that is very interesting basically you know several kinds of technologies are enabling several kinds of products and technology itself is a product because it is sold to some you know uh, a producer or manufacturer or user who further uses uh, you know use it for uh, you know development of products for further users and so on and we have talked about that when we, when we talked about you know industrial classification and uh, you know consumer classification of products. So, online platforms have been here for long long time they have been in, in introductory stage for quite some time. If I am not wrong probably zoom was has been here for 7, 8 years now webex as a platform has been here for quite some time I am not sure about the time period but, but during past 2 years when we have you know gone through this devastating interaction with uh, covid 19 virus all these platforms they became the requirement of the day and uh, growth came in. I should not say that it is, uh, it is it should be called as happy growth, but growth still is there because somehow these uh, platforms they played a very important role for all of us to remain connected otherwise you know things would have not been that way. So, so but, but as a product pl these interactive platforms they have grown. Now, come to growth stage again categories are same and I will uh, start reiterating in front of you and lastly I will be talking about the strategic orientation of a product manager while looking at his products in terms of stages. So, so uh, that decision making perspective I will be referring to later on but at this moment I am just sailing you through different stages. So, then growth stage sales climbs in you know because early adopters uh, you know the customers uh, you know they, they start purchasing that and then it starts picking up and additional consumers start buying it and then you know uh, uh, brand awareness starts building itself up because you have put in lots of money in as far as or, or suitable proportional money in terms of you know cost of marketing and advertising integrated marketing communication and so on and, and retail and distribution and so on. Competitors you see new competitors start entering on or people who have been waiting for you to try the waters they have been also looking you know staying at the bay and then they jump into the fray because uh, you see uh, they never wanted to interact with that kind of a cost in relation to introduction of products. So, so the, they, they thought that once the market starts building up so they also come in and now competition comes in from all the sides starts pouring in because whole of the many a times many products are pioneers in their categories and at that time you know many people start entering into the fray deliberately many times products are not pioneers they the, the same category exists product is new. So, at that time you would not find so many new entrants coming into the fray, but existing competitive competition is very strong. So, they want they, they push it from all the sides to retain their customers and push you outside as, as an entrant. So, uh, this kind of a thing has been uh, discussed by you know uh, Michael Porter's five forces model and, and that is also a very important contribution and uh, you know uh, that can be referred to while talking about new entrants or substitutes and those kind of elements he has categorically mentioned. Now, profits increase as marketing costs are spread over a larger volume and unit manufacturing costs fall faster than price declines owing to the producer learning effect. So, it is it is a things start getting in favor of the manufacturer or the producer. 
prices stabilize or fall slight slightly and again I say uh, I say that it is not universal many producers they take advantage of the growth because they are the category drivers we have talked about category so they have they are category drivers and many a times they they take advantage of this situation and they go for charging a premium on that and or or many a times they bring in associated products and they build up you know a kind of uh, uh, a package for the customer in terms of associated products driving further benefits. So, it depends upon what situation you are in and that is why I, I talked about acknowledging and foreseeing in terms of a product manager's task. So, then promotion companies maintain marketing expenditure or raise it slightly or even may reduce it actually if you are doing very well to meet competition and continue to educate the market and, and many a times they go for you know different kinds of uh, strategies like flighting or, or you know those kind of uh, campaigns wherein they go for a spurt and then they reduce it and then they go for a spurt once again and so on. Sales rises much faster than market expenditure causing a welcome decline in the marketing to sales ratio. For example, electric vehicles they are in early growth phases for sure, smartphones are on the higher growth phases for sure and here again I would give you a, an important input because you see many a times in cases of different products and product categories you would find that the length of a particular phase is you know extremely different. For example, in case of smartphones you would realize that the length of the growth phase might be slightly longer as a product and a product category. So, depends upon you know where to put that as far as that length or period goes that actually depends upon uh, our own insight, our own understanding and data and research which we have gone through and data we have. Then comes in the third stage maturity stage. Now again sales the rate of sales growth will slow in earliest phase you know it is an uphill kind of a situation. Com competition is very very strong probably and uh, you know many a times customer is tired of buying the same kind of a product basically he wants something new actually and, and uh, he is fulfilling his needs from, from several kinds of options. So, so uh, then there can be many reasons and afterwards sales per capita flatten because of market saturation as most potential cons consumers have tried the product and future sales depends upon population growth and replacement uh, you know uh, demand and then ultimately the sales slow down creating over capacity in the industry and so on and, and there are several kinds of reasons. But remember one thing here these several kinds of reasons become the basis for the decision making of product managers and very important input at this stage. Product managers they if you know uh, act reactively means looking at passing through the stages if they take decisions on these kind of elements that might not be such a successful move. The most important thing for a product manager is to foresee and I am repeating this word foreseeing because forecasting is something different forecasting is a method methodological uh, you know uh, perspective wherein you put up some data and then you you know uh, uh, look into variables and then you look into dependency and, and you know independence of variables and then you forecast that this is how things are going to be that is a very scientific exercise people have been doing that on the basis of lots of data and data insights and inputs and so on. But foreseeing is an art many a times despite of having all the statistical capabilities artificial intelligence associated with 
uh, what what you can think of and, and uh, data science is supporting you having all those elements along with you many a times decisions they do not fall into right categories and I have not been uh, you know favoring the usage of word failure but then I would say that those products wherein you know foreseeing has not been done so well they are not usually accepted so well. Then comes in competitors new competitive forces emerge from all the sides because along with substitutes alternatives are also being brought in technological changes are going on environmental changes are going on and you know weaker competitors they start withdrawing. Many a times competition is very important for the health of the complete industry. If competition is withdrawing you should be careful. A few giants dominate and they profit mainly through high volume and lower costs surrounding them in a multitude of market niches including market specialists, product specialists and customizing firms. I can elaborate all these elements with the perspective of decision making which I would refrain from doing at this moment because I want you to think in terms of all these elements on with, with the perspective of the question I shared with you what to do. And all along the course I will be continuously talking on the decision making perspective of product managers the basis would remain the same or similar. Profits start declining, low cost per customer because again you, you, uh, you know eliminate some procedures and so on and we have talked about uh, you know uh, reverse positioning and those kind of aspects also. So, so here please recall those and companies they start decreasing their promotion. Now, at this moment sometimes logic says that promotion should be increased, but then your profits are declining and you can you cannot compensate the cost of promotion. So, you reduce the promotion. Now, this is a very paradoxical kind of a uh, thing many a times. What should be done is again a question mark note it down think of this we may address this in due course of time. So, and you see examples can be televisions computers can be put here somewhere in maturity stage think of it. It can be somehow because uh, if you will notice your habits you see especially when the usage is getting transformed in terms of you know software availability and different kinds of software coming into the fray then definitely computing or usage of computers you know has, has been traversing to a different kind of uh, you know uh, levels. Decline a final stage should I say to me it is not the final stage because I you know I, I wish to remain hopeful uh, and I will I will tell you why, but, but again look at this stage wherein sales may decline for several reasons including technological advances, shifts in consumer tastes and increased domestic and foreign competition. The decline might be slow as for sewing machines and newspapers. Now, here again I would suggest this is also a relative kind of uh, a thing basically for many markets for many customers for many producers sewing machines would have vanished, but still there are one or two organizations and we have talked about that in maturity stage which are actually continuously producing sewing machines and there are buyers who are continuously buying those probably in different forms, but independent independent individual buyers are also buying those. Newspapers just a while ago I told you that Denny Jagran is one of the largest read newspapers in the world. Newspaper as a product we marked on that trajectory somewhere you know kind of you know maturity or decline, but many newspapers as products are still under growth. So, so you see that is the point which we have to think of. I definitely admire the intelligence of product and brand managers of newspapers like Danik Jagran you see. So, and, and again mentioning of decline you know this might be slow or rapid as it was for you know 5.25 floppy this and 8 track cartridges sales may plunge to 0 
you know or a very very you know terrifying low level basically competitors there is lots of decline in number because ultimately product is vanishing and again it is it is relative in character profits decline some firms withdraw price you know some may resort to price reductions to remain in the market but again that is not a profit making kind of a thing basically and promotions they are almost non existent and everything goes on by its own brand value in due course of time several examples are there cds you know and and cable tv services are again going through and again decline has a time span so some might be at the later end some might be at the earlier most stages and so on so so you see just remember the discussion we have just had on different stages and i'll be coming back to you with insights on that what should a product manager think in terms of when he foresees and understands that you know for example under sales category he might face x situation what should he do how should he go about it and while talking of those kind of elements i'll be talking of one or two more stage, stages one which can be seen as an intermediary stage and the other stage which can be seen as you know again you know post decline stage also so that can be an interesting discussion for us to build upon the concept of product life cycle i'll be seeing you next time till then goodbye